If you were to take a look at my channel, you would definitely know that I like to mess with Korean levers or Japanese levers or levers or anywhere in between. But the levers we're looking at today are quite special ones made by a one man team known as Bandit. And the line I'm talking about today is Sanjux. Now Sanjux, if you didn't know what they were, I really wouldn't be surprised. If you go ahead and look up the Sanjux V5 or V3 online, you're definitely gonna have a limited amount of information that you're actually gonna get. You'll probably fall across a blog post from Bandit that has the progression of how these levers came to what they are today. What's funny about these levers is you can't buy these in a normal fashion. You can't get them on like a storefront like Folks Attack, Arcade Shock, Paradise Arcade, or IST for that matter, even though they do hail from Korea. It's kind of interesting and uh, almost like urban legend style of trying to get these levers in general, which required you to either go to Korean and ask Bandit himself to see if they can give you one, or to know somebody that knows somebody that can email somebody else's friend's sister's mom's friend's cousin's mom's sister's friend's brother to see if you can maybe get a shot to get one. There's gonna be two variants we're gonna be looking at today from Sanjux, which one is gonna be the Sanjux V5, which is the Korean variant, and the Sanjux V3, which is the Japanese variant. Anyway, that's gonna be it for today. Hopefully you guys uh, will be able to understand why I feel like these are probably the best crafted levers, period. So let's get into it. Welcome to the revolution. Come on, come on! I know the names V5 and V3 aren't exactly revolutionary, but you'll see the craftsmanship definitely speaks for themselves. This will be less of a review, but more of a look at these motherfucking levers, goddamn! kind of video. With that said though, I will be comparing them to other levers of similar styles like the 309 MJ series for the V5 and a Sanwa JLF for the V3. To put in perspective of the rarity and quality of these levers, if they were fight sticks, they'd be along the lines of a Hori VLX Diamond brand new in box, the gold Mad Cats TE that you actually had to win at EVO a while ago, or the early model of the Kwama Dragon, you know the split design, not the current one, that will only be the ones to be comparable. This lets you know these levers are made for people who will not only appreciate the product, but the effort that went into making it. So let's start with the Korean lever variant, which is the Sanjux V5. At first glance, you're probably like, Oh well, it's just another 309 MJ. Honestly, you're not wrong, but you're definitely more wrong than right. I really need to stop writing these scripts so late. While the V5 is heavily influenced by the 309, sharing the lightweight grommet, crown bat top, and a similar throw distance, as comparison and design, the first Dan 309 MJ cannot put a finger to the Tekken goddamn law Jesus rank V5. One of the first things I noticed is how solid the body felt while moving the crown shaft into the collar, sounding almost like a block of metal compared to the 309's hollow build. The V5's actuator is the smallest I play it on, at least for a crown style lever, being at about 14.9 millimeters, making for a tight but manageable corner, which is partially thanks to the V16 Omrons. Even the attention to detail continues with the Omrons, as Bandit did modify the inside of the switches from what I know, and made them have a very smooth actuation and being quieter than the Gersling A3s, while also still being a slightly heavier switch. The actuator hole is also smaller in comparison to the 309, which makes for a tidal feel and more concentrated area for switch actuation. The only downside is you can't swap a 309 MJ or a CDP actuator as they are too large and will limit the throw to an unusable point, but an actuator set can be purchased if inquired. When it comes to tension, the V5 definitely takes a more unique approach, as it compresses the grommet, making it feel a bit stiffer than its OEM rating, say something like a 25A, feeling more like a 29 or 30A ish grommet. As for me personally, I usually throw out the 25A that comes with a crown lever as I do feel it's too light, but at least on the V5, it was a lot more manageable. But when I went to my go to 35A, it did become too heavy and and I did become in this weird limbo mode where I couldn't figure out which one I wanted, but I ended up selling it back on the 25A. Now stepping away from tension, we can take a look at the exterior design. A stamp is usually a statement or regarded favorable by the stampee by definition, which is probably why the Omron font is stamped into the body, notifying the player to use nothing of lower quality, or as the ancient Egyptians was said, don't fuck this up. It's almost sad to cover the exterior design with your fight stick with its clean machining lines, stamped markings throughout the body, hefty build material, and threaded holes for easy switch and mounting plate removal. Hell, even the mounting plate itself is polished. After revisiting some of my shorter throw levers, I've come to realize that the throw distance is no longer a deal breaker for me. So in the V5's case, it was a pleasure to play on. So with that said, let's take a look at the Sanjux V3. The V3 is the Japanese variant from Sanjux. <coughs> I know, I know, I know. I used to really fucking hate Japanese levers, but I have come to appreciate them recently, thanks to this lever and a Japanese setup that I put together not too long ago. The V3 has similarities from both the JLF and Sumitsu levers as they seem to be fused together for a unique experience overall. The JLF compatible shaft, the 12.7mm actuator, and the 2 pound spring is almost a perfect setup for me personally, but if one feels the need to mod it, you can use aftermarket sama parts if one chooses to do so. I'm really glad Bandit chose the 2 pound spring as it feels the sweet spot for ball top users, 
adding just a bit more feedback during movement. The characteristics of a Sumitsu can be found with the short hinge AM5s, which seem to be the same from a Sumitsu LS56. This setup makes the V3 feel more like a 2.5 to 3 pound spring setup, which I definitely enjoy more than the 1 pound spring of a JLF. Finally, taking a look at the restrictor gate mounting system reveals the anodized blue mounting plate that holds in the restrictor gate. After removing the four screws, which are fucking threaded by the way, you can swap from a circle, square, squircle, rounded square, or octo gate, which again are fucking quality. I almost like this lever more than the V5 due to its flexibility and feel in almost every way. This is pretty much the most satisfying setup for the lever with easy diagonals, a more desirable tension, and a metal-like feel from the restrictor gate system that just shits on the competition. Hell, even when you're about to activate a switch, it almost feels like you're being sucked into the actuation point, making for an even more pleasant experience. In short, I enjoy the feel over my JLF by a long shot. If I had to choose the V3 or a JLF to take the prong, then the JLF would get- <laughs> For a while, I thought Japanese style levers were a thing in the past for me, but the V3 has easily become my go-to Japanese style lever. I coined the V3 as a why not both lever, combining elements from two styles together to get a one tailored experience. Maybe even why not a threesome, since they just feel like there's a pinch of K lever in there as well. The properties of the V5 reminds me of the crazy dong pal lever that requires the player really to commit to a direction, so say it with your wrist. Unlike the CDP, you don't have a limp dick wobble in neutral as the switches rest on the actuator due to the closer switch spacing of the V5. In its stock form with the 25A, it's like a low tension lever with high tension switches, similar to that of the 47C. Anyway, the switches are almost an added tool for tension for the V5, but has a buttery smooth actuation unlike the more mechanical 47C. Maybe an MX Brown for you know, reference. This might explain why I was having trouble with my 35A as the tension from the grommet and switches make for some hot and heavy tension on tension action. My grommet choice is still in the air, even though I wish I had a 30A, but I'll be switching between the 25 and 35 until I get a middle ground. The return to neutral is super clean with no bounce back, allowing to follow up with booze with little errors during movement. The V5, in my opinion, may be for a player that likes a shorter throw, narrow corners but are deeper than, say, like a 309 MJ, allowing to utilize the entire throw range, and the stronger switches but have a much smoother uh, actuation and, you know, the overall short collar form factor. Also, these buttons right here from Amazon. You guys keep asking me about these. They're like 19 millimeter or something. I'll link in the description. You guys keep asking me. And it's not plugged in. <laughs> I like how I said this wasn't gonna be a fucking review and it turned into a fuck. It was really hard to find anything I didn't like about the V3. The V3's corners were pretty easy for me to hit, particularly with this combo with Kazuya as I was getting more uh, consistent perfect electric enders. The tension with the ball top is just right with the spring, actuator and switch combo makes the setup feel nice and tight with no slop anywhere. I did swap over to my bat top, but the two pound spring is just a hair too soft for me. Maybe three pounds would be the one to go for, but I'll wait until I experiment. Thankfully, I didn't experience any ricochet upon returning back to neutral as I have gotten ricochet on other Japanese style levers in the past. I didn't feel the need to mod this one as the way I play on this type of lever fits me perfectly, but I do feel like this is the most balanced lever I've come across, period. No complaints, only praise. So I figured I should talk about the one that I forgot to mention kind of, but this is the Fujin mod and it does exactly what you think it does. It turns your Fujin into a short collar lever. Now the cool thing about this is even though it's just the mod, the attention to detail still follows the elegant design, the machining lines. It just looks super clean as any of the fully built levers like the V3 or the V5. Now, the cool part about this is that you do retain the longer throw of the Fujin V3 compared to other levers. So you do pretty much keep all of the characteristics that makes the Fujin a Fujin. Now, the reason why I wanted to feature these for a while is because the attention to details is out of this world, especially compared to something like my knee lever where it makes it look like a McDonald's toy or a Sanwa JLF, the Japanese variant for the Sanjux lever, makes it look like a transforming vehicle man from the dollar 
store. Overall, the Sandjux line are the first line of levers I come across that I never really felt the need to mod. I can pretty much accept them in their stock form. Say if somebody gave me the V5 out of box and told me I couldn't touch it, I'd probably be fine with what I had. So yeah, if I could generalize though, real quick with the V5, it was probably gonna be like a 47C kind of actuation with the hardest switches of the decals. The Fujin V3 is kind of like deepish corners without the throw, obviously, but you have the throw of a 309 MJ slash Kaze uh, kind of thing. So add all those two together in a milkshake and you get that mill fucking V5 fucking Napoleon Dynamite, you know? Maybe that might work out for you if that's what you're looking for. Then you have the Fujin mod, which still has the same amount of attention to detail. I mean, he could have just got like an alpha collar and just plopped it on the Fujin and called it a Fujin mod. So glad he really went the route to make that extra step to really make the players feel like they have something special. And then when it comes to something like the V3, easily my most favorite Japanese lever so far. Uh, it blows anything that I had previously before, which is funny because I had the LS56, but I did like the M5 switches, but I didn't like the shorter throw, but I do like the throw of the Sanwa JLF or a Japanese lever at least, which coincides with the preferences I have for a Korean lever as well. Then coincidentally, the V3 puts those two together and of course fits me perfectly. So I've been wanting to put this video together for quite a while. I had probably the V5 and the V3 for at least three months. It just kind of get pushed back and pushed back because I really wanted to put the time to show off these levers because I feel like Bandit really put the time to give to the players a unique experience that only he can provide. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and maybe you just want to try something new and be a scrub like me. Peace out guys, until next time. Whoa!